Did you know that this was the last film that Walt Disney directly worked on? And did you know that Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston animated over half the film? This is 100 Facts About the Jungle Book. The Jungle Book is the 19th Disney feature animation film. It is based on Rudyard Kipling's book that was released back in 1894. During this time period in the 60s, Walt Disney was occupied with a lot of other ventures. He was making live action films, television, he had built Disneyland and was in the process of buying land and planning Disney World. Bill Peet was a master of creating stories. He was the only writer for 101 Dalmatians and this is very rare for an animated feature film. Bill Peet's uh, uh, one of the greatest story men that ever lived. Someone who Walt had leaned on uh, towards the end when, when his uh, attention was being split by the parks and uh, all of the things that Disney was getting into. Whenever there was a problem with the story, Walt Disney would go to Bill Peet. He was Walt's right hand man. 101 Dalmatians was a great success, so Walt trusted him more with the story. Because of its success, Walt was hands off with the next film, Sword in the Stone. So, once again, Bill Peet was the only writer for The Sword in the Stone. Bill Peet suggested The Jungle Book to Walt Disney. Peet read and reread Jungle Book. He drew sketches and imagined what scenes would be included in the film. The Sword in the Stone was not received well. And Walt Disney became more involved for The Jungle Book. The animation film department was small back when this film was made. In the 60s, it was nothing like the huge system that it is today. There was also an additional problem. By the time that Walt headed in to the Jungle Book, he had reduced the whole animation operation so that there was a master animator who was the head of the entire operation, and that was Willie Reitherman. There was a single art director, Ken Anderson, and there were four supervising animators, Ollie Johnston, Frank Thomas, Milt Kahl and John Lounsbury, all of whom were members of the famous Nine Old Men. And then there was one story man. And in the case of The Jungle Book, Bill Peet was really the story man. So it was Bill Peet's job to create the whole story. His version mirrored the book and was darker than a usual Disney movie. When Walt Disney came to review the story, he did not like the current tone. Walt and Bill couldn't seem to reach agreement on the film's development and uh, the two of them, after all those years, broke up. Pete left the studio and never returned. Larry Clemens took over as the head writer. There was a famous meeting involving Walt Disney and the future of the storyline. Larry Clemens did a lot of sketches as Walt preferred to look at drawings rather than read scripts. The Sherman brothers wrote the music for this film. They had already wrote the music for The Sword and Stone and Mary Poppins. Well, we were at this meeting and the first thing Walt said, I remember, how many fellas have read the, uh, the original Jungle Book story by Rudyard Kipling? And nobody said anything because nobody had read it. He says, good, I don't want you to read the book. Now here's the story. And with that, he launched into a typical Walt Disney storyteller. He's a master storyteller, the greatest storyteller you've ever seen. He characterized every personality with his face and his movements and his gestures. And he launched into how he wanted to tell the story. And he said, but I want it to be fun. I want this to be a fun story, an adventure with fun. No mysterious, none of this heavy stuff. And that's what he, he looked at us and he said, and I want to have a little heart in it too, you know what I mean? Wooly Riverman was one of Disney's Nine Old Men. The Nine Old Men were a group of animators responsible for the Disney style. Wooly became the sole director of The Sword in the Stone. He was trusted by Walt Disney to lead the team. Jungle Book came at a very interesting point in the evolution of animation at Disney. Walt, in some ways, knighted a group of artists all at the ultimate pinnacle of their career. Wooly Riverman, who was also one of Walt's nine old men was the director. He was this very weathered pilot who was also an animator. Willie served in World War II for the United States Air Force. He earned the Flying Cross after serving in Africa, China, India and South Pacific. He had a lot of respect from the other animators at Disney. Walt Disney's emphasis was on the characters. He wanted to focus more on the characters than the plot. It bears very little resemblance to the original Rudyard Kipling, but I don't think that's what Walt wanted. 
Walt always wanted things that had characters in them that engaged the audience. And I think this film delivers in spades that way. Sometimes a, a storyline that's too complicated can get in the way. And Jungle Book had the simplest storyline ever. I don't want to go back to the man village. The storyline didn't get in the way of the characters. There's a beauty of that uh, little picture. Ken Anderson was responsible for the design of the characters. Ken Anderson was a legend of Disney, and he had been with the company for many years. Ken was just a, a master at coming up with a quick statement that read a certain kind of personality. There's a drawing that he did of Shere Khan where he just looks incredibly haughty and he's got this nose stuck up in the air and his chin is sticking out. This film has some of the greatest animation ever produced. Frank Thomas, Ollie Johnston, Milt Carl, and John Lounsbury all did some of their finest work on this film. They had healthy competition with each other to create excellent work. Frank and Ollie are responsible for over half the animation of the entire film. Frank and Ollie were best friends and had been at the company since Snow White. They had offices across the corridor from each other and were often helping each other out with their animations. They bought houses next door to each other and commuted to work every day together. Frank and I had these two back-to-back -back sequences that were really important to the picture. Without these coming off properly, uh, all this character work we had done wouldn't pay off. And it was terribly important that we make these come off. This was the type of thing Walt talked about when he said, you guys get that personality, I'll take care of the story. They would discuss any issues with their animation on their commute to work and try to work out what they would do with their animations when they got to the office. It is because of the bond that they share that we see this friendship between Mowgli and Baloo. The tough thing was that Baloo was put on the spot in this. Bagheera tells him he has to take the kid back to the man village and he says, why me? And Baloo had never done anything like this before. He was the, the physical type. He didn't understand how to do anything where he had to figure out a problem in your mind. Frank and Ollie were the masters at putting empathy into their characters. One of the best pieces of animation that Frank has ever done is the scene when Baloo has to tell Mowgli that he's taken him back to the man village. And now the situation changes when the bear has to talk to the boy and tell him that they're going to go back to the man village. And he knows this is going to be a terrible betrayal on his part. And he doesn't know how to tell the boy, he doesn't know what he's going to say to him because they built everything on their trust and their friendship. And, and Mowgli's so happy at the idea of having this wonderful day with Baloo. He's running all around, pulling Baloo's hand, kicking him in the pants, climbing up on things, chasing butterflies. He's just in ecstasy. This is really the payoff sequence right here. This is because the betrayal comes here. You had to feel and understand what Baloo was saying and feeling. There is so much heart in this performance that only Frank Thomas could create. Frank had to think in depth about the acting during this scene. He came up with a few gestures that conveys his feelings perfectly. We had to do an awful lot of work uh, together trying to work out how the bear would act, what gestures he would use, what type of acting, what expressions he would use. How is he going to play this? And how is the boy going to play it too? First we thought of things like a uh, hand on the face, uh, you know, rubbing the chin, uh, gee, what, what, what can I say to this, this guy? Or, or things like that. Wallace Beery used to do that, and it's pretty effective. Ollie suggested the hand should be back here on the rubbing the back of his neck. And we'd already used this rubbing the arm thing. Uh, how about pounding it? That's pretty good. Uh, I don't know the best, though. The one that communicated the best to the audience to me was one that started here and then pulled off and came around the face, but didn't stay on the face. He came down here to the chest, and I knew a guy in the army who used to scratch his chest all the time when he was thinking this way, and I thought, well, maybe that's the best thing to do. Ollie Johnston animated a large chunk of The Bare Necessities, a scene that has been watched millions of times around the world. Ollie Johnston was also tasked with animating the end scene. For a long time, the story did not have an ending, one day, Walt Disney came in and told everyone that ending would be a young girl who Mowgli sees and follows her into the man village. I thought that was a terrible idea when I first heard it. Here's this tacked on ending. What can he do with it? 
That's why we gave it to you to animate. I know, I know. <laughs> and I, I wrestled with it, and the more I wrestled with it, the better I liked it. And so finally I managed to uh, help this little girl kind of innocently seduce Mowgli going back into the man village. I would have said lure her. <laughs> <laughs> Milt Carl was an incredible draftsman. This is extremely clear to anyone who has watched The Jungle Book. Milt Carl animated Shere Khan. I am still in awe watching his animations on the tiger. He studied endless hours of footage of tigers for this task. He captures the weight of the tiger. Each footstep feels heavy. This was the first animation that I can recall watching where the character felt like it had real weight to it. You can see the muscles moving. The stripes are laid over the muscles and they're pulled across the skin. It is so easy to forget that these are pencil drawings because of Milt's outstanding ability. Milt also did a lot of the introductions to the characters so that other animators knew how to animate them. John Lounsbury animated the dance sequence with King Louis. King Louis had great poses during the scene. A lot of the inspiration was taken from the recording session. Walt came in one final time to say goodbye. He did not tell anyone how ill he was. He came into my office and sat down. He just wanted to talk. Matter of fact, in that chair in there, as a matter of fact. And then he walked down the hall and said goodbye. He never said goodbye to anybody in his life. Well, I'll see you next week or something. And then he asked to be driven home because he no longer had the energy. And that was the last anybody ever saw. Then it wasn't more than another week that we came to work and about 9.30, I remember it so clearly, Ollie came in with tears in his eyes and he says, Walt's dead. Almost a year after Walt's death, The Jungle Book was released to theatres. It was like a time capsule gift from Walt and people were excited to see the film. The film was a massive success, earning $23.8 million worldwide, becoming the most successful animated film ever at that point. It had a small budget of $4 million, so this was a nice profit for the Disney company. Despite being vastly different from the book, the film received great reviews. Disney VHSs were extremely profitable for Disney. The VHS sold 24.5 million units. Yes, you heard that right, 24 million units, not dollars. The Jungle Book has left an incredible legacy. Many animators look up to this film. Many characters appear in the 1990 animated series Tailspin, in which Baloo is a pilot, and I never understood why. <laughs> a television series called Jungle Cubs told the stories of Baloo, Louie, Car, and Shere Khan when they were children. There were two video games based on the film. Jungle Book was a platformer game released in 1993 for the Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Jungle Book Groove Party was a dance mat game released in 2000 on the PS2. I actually had this game and I remember playing it. That had been locked away in my memory for some time. Since the film's release, many of the film's characters appeared in House of Mouse, The Lion King, One and a Half, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and Aladdin, The King of Thieves. Baloo and King Louie are meetable characters in all the Disney parks. They often appear in the parades and on floats. Last year, it was the Jungle Book Festival at Disneyland Paris and I managed to attend it and it was incredible. Jungle Book 2 was released in 2003 by Disney Toon Studio. Mowgli runs away from the man village to go see Baloo. A live action remake was released in 2016, directed by John Furu. It includes most of the songs by the original composer, Richard M. Sherman. Thank you for watching guys. If you've made it this far, please like and subscribe. It does mean the world to me and it does really help other people find the videos. The next film in this series is 100 Facts About the Aristocats.